President Bola Ahmed Tinubu seeks Rev's 500 billion naira palliative approval for subsidy removal. Nigerian students face tough times in the UK as tuition soars by 60%. Then we are going to also look on the program here at the headlines from uh, some of our major uh, national dailies. A very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. It's a wonderful Thursday morning and we do hope that your mindset this morning is how to have a side hustle if you don't already have one because we talk business on uh, Thursday. Even if the topics may not be business any Thursday that you tune in to breakfast, know that we're thinking about how you're going to be financially more stable than you are right now. And if there's a possibility, we'll talk to you about how to uh, make your business work by talking to relevant people that will help us understand the business environment. Once again, good morning to you and uh, welcome to today's edition of The Breakfast. And uh, very uh, quickly now, we go to some of the things that are uh, trending on social media and everywhere else. Uh, one of them is that the U.S. is holding a pre-departure orientation for 700 Nigerian students. U.S. is holding a pre-orientation, pre-departure orientation for 700 Nigerian students. The embassy in Abuja and the U.S. Consulate General in Lagos have hosted a pre-departure orientation for approximately 700 students who are benefiting from the 2023 U.S. Missions Education USA Advising Services in Nigeria. These Nigerian students will soon depart for study in the United States, including 73 Opportunity Funds recipients. Nigeria is the 10th largest contributor of foreign students to the United States. A statement by the mission added that last year alone, over 14,000 Nigerian students were enrolled in over 1,000 U.S. higher education institutions. The Education USA is a U.S. Department of State-supported network of over 430 international students advising centers across the world that provide information and guidance to uh, on this U.S. higher education admission processes. And uh, this means that like a lot of people say, if you have to travel abroad, the biggest mistake is not to know what to expect when you get to that country of your destination. And so the U.S. has made this possible for students that are intending to go to the U.S. to know what it takes to get admitted into schools and what to expect when you get to the U.S. and uh, you want to study. It's, a very, it's what they call advice, advising centers for all the students. It's not like they have given scholarship to the people who are going, but if you need to go to America, this and this is what you are supposed to expect, and this and this is what you're supposed to do uh, when you get to that country. So it's a very good thing because some of them will be hit by culture change or culture, um, the difference in culture and so many other things that could lead you into trouble or could make your life unbearable if you don't have that first-hand information. So if you must be a student, uh, you get this advice free of charge as it is from the U.S. But it also uh, speaks to how much uh, education tourism we do here in Nigeria, uh, that is from Nigeria to the U.S. In the U.S. alone, last year alone, 14,000, according to the statement, uh, that was released. 14,000 Nigerians paying school fees in dollars to all the schools in uh, America uh, because they want to obtain higher education. And that also is just telling us a minute fraction. There are others in the UK as well. There are others in Canada. There are others even like now we know in Sudan, in Ukraine, in Russia, in Germany. Uh, in fact, one Nigerian just... Um, emerged with first class in uh, German university and all that. So we know that our students, our children, our compatriots are elsewhere studying. If U.S. alone will have 14,000, you can imagine how much of this foreign currency we are losing because maybe the educational system back home is not what it should be. 
Anyway, we'll move to another item and court orders remand of Trinity Guy in Agodi prison till August. Do you remember Trinity Guy? Uh, a magistrate court in uh, uh, Iyagangku, Ibadan. I hope I got that right, or your state capital, has ordered the continual remand of skit maker and prankster Abdullahi Maruf Adisa, popularly known as Trinity Guy in prison, for allegedly sexualizing a minor in a viral skit video till the next adjourned date slated for August 3, 2023. The trial court who made this ruling on Tuesday also ordered the remand of Isiaka Ahmed, 40 years old, and his wife Rufayat Ahmed, 29 years old, who are the parents of the alleged minor. The police had arraigned the prank star in court in June and charged Abdullahi alongside the parents of the victim with conspiracy and sexual abuse and exploitation of a 10-year-old girl in the Kuala neighborhood of uh, uh, Ibadan on December 17, 2022. The prosecution counsel, Inspector Oluwakemi Oroshai, informed the court that Abdullahi Ahmed and his wife Rofiat plotted to commit sexual abuse on the minor. Even uh, it violates Section 35, Subsection 1, and is punishable under Section 35, Subsection 2 of the Oyo State Child Rights Law 2006, as well as simultaneously violating the sections 516 of the Criminal Code Laws of Oyo State 2000. Now, remember, there has been calls uh, for... Uh, this regulation in the skit industry, in the entertainment industry, somewhat, you know. People are making money. Yes, I know that. So it's a kind of empowerment, it's a kind of employment and all that. People uh, get um, uh, entertained by the skit makers. But there's al always so much that you can do, only so much that you can do and not overstep the bounds. In the case of Trinity Guy, he has been napped by the police. He's in court. He's being remanded in prison. But... He seems to be just uh, a fall guy in this whole issue. There are a lot of other people that need to face the music as well because a lot of them, when they do these things, do not even take into consideration the health issues that the victim may face, the emotional issues, the psychological issues that the person who uh, these things have been done to might face. I've seen videos where... Uh, Someone was claiming to try to carry a, a bowl of water and then it's just planned that when you go to help him carry this bowl of water, he's, he pours the water on you. Does he know what you're going through? Does he know where you're going to, whether you're going to a job interview that you cannot miss and you're already late? Does he know whether you're going to the hospital because of one condition or the other? Does he know whether you have a heart condition that you cannot be uh, triggered by anything? What if somebody loses their lives? Who will have to face the music and all that? So these things need to be regulated and whatever relevant of, uh, body needs to do this should act fast. Trinity guy today may be facing the music, but he's not the only one. So we should look inwards and make sure that if it is for fun, it should continue to be fun and not subject some people to shame. You know, uh, The other day we saw a video where people were actually doing rituals and they brought a, a victim and dropped on the road and they danced around the victim and before people were laughing, they were saying all oh, these skit makers and all that and then they entered their vehicle, zoomed off and the person that they dropped, the victim that they dropped was not in her senses anymore and that was when people realized. So how do we see, how do we know when it's a skit and when it's not a skit? You could stand and say, okay, this is a skit without knowing that actually something is going to happen to you and you may just lose your life. Who do we hold in cases like that? So whoever needs to regulate these needs to act fast. If fireworks will be banned because there's a possibility that when you're, 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 you're shooting your fireworks, someone else might be shooting real ammunitions and robbing somewhere else. It's a security issue. That's what the police said to us. So fireworks are no longer there. Knockouts, as we call them, are no longer there during the festive period, Christmas period, uh, precisely, that people use all those things. So if you can ban that because of the effect it might have, because of what it w might blanket so that we do not get to know, then why not look into this? I'm not calling for a ban, but I'm calling for regulations so that we know. In the broadcast industry, we know that there's something called NTBB, 
not to be broadcast. There are some things, there are some guidelines that should be given skit makers so that they don't step on the rights of others and do what is not supposed to be done. Well, um, there's so many other issues that are trending on the social media. If you are in this day and age, I'm sure that you surf the, the web, you go to the internet and you see a lot of things that need to be talked about. Okay, so we will be discussing so many things today. We'll be discussing one of them is the fact that uh, the president has asked for money for palliatives. And when we get our guest this morning, we'll be talking about that issue right now. And if you ask me, my question is, do we need palliatives or we need to revisit whatever is giving rise to the palliative? Because sometimes there's a possibility that, from experience, the money that will be spent on palliatives may even be more than the fuel subsidy that has been said to have been removed. Uh, so if that is the case, then was it a wise decision to remove the fuel subsidy or not? We'll find out uh, from the expert when the time comes. In the meantime, we'll just take a short break and then see what the weather says. In Aja axis of Lagos State. It's already raining. It was raining very early this morning. Uh, when you get to as far as uh, uh, Leganza, uh, VGC, and so many other areas, it was drizzling. Maybe now it's a downpour. I don't know. And a lot of people while coming to work were praying that it should not rain on VI because uh, sometimes when it rains on the roads, you have ankle deep, shin deep, uh, water puddles that uh, you might not want to enter and then when you're going to your office you might need to just remove your shoes and put your legs in the dirty water if you don't have a car and if you do have a car there's a possibility the car might just stop on the way because the water has entered wherever it enters in a car and makes it stop but that's the situation we find ourselves we do hope that solutions will be found for all these uh, problems that we seem to be having especially here in lagos as we try to make ends meet every day of our lives here in lagos you wake up very early you go home very late and then uh you 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 have to do that as a circle some people have just one day to rest, and that is a Sunday. And then they have to go for service, stay in the church <laughs> till 4 o'clock. There's no rest for all of us. It used to be said, no rest for the wicked. Are we all wicked in Lagos? Because we don't seem to have any rest uh, for ourselves. But God will help us, and we do hope that solutions, like I said, will be found. The new administration has come. The new sheriff in town is doling out a lot of things. Laws here, cutting down here, uh, adding here, and all that and all that. In six months, we'll see how this will settle down. Let's see if we will celebrate Christmas this year, applauding the government for doing well or will celebrate Christmas this year for the people who used to sacrifice a, a cow will now be looking for a, a little chicken to do that or maybe just two chicken laps to do that because we've seen cases where people fall from the high rungs of the ladder to the very low. Now almost everybody is poor. So, well, but God will help us. So let's take that break and see what the weather says if it is possible and then we'll return to look at the major headlines. Stay with us.